Yo, what's the business? It's your boy Celsius, man. We in the rap shack. You know where the fuck we at, you already know what it is and what we gonna do. Holla at the kid, man. Yeah. What you Celsius, man? You ain't it's been a long time since you've been this motherfucker. <laughs> man, it's been a minute though, man. Uh living life, man, uh been working, labbing it, you know what I mean? Day to day. I know it's been a minute, uh, married, kid on the way, you know what I mean? Life is good, honestly. Yes. Congratulations on the marriage. I uh, appreciate it, appreciate it, man. How uh, did you a lot of shit, musically and life? Yeah, right? that, that change is like a different stream, man, it, and, it, and it's a different stream. I'm really happy I'm in a different space, mentally, spiritually. I'm all right, man, you know? I ain't stressing, I still got my hair and shit, you know? <laughs> hair get longer than a motherfucker, but you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 Talk about the new project, you feel me? You feel Up me? in Smoke, man, yeah. Produced by Unseen Asylum, YPD Coley, 209 Stand Up. Man, that's my cousin right there, man. Uh, we, we dropping that project March 6th March on uh, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, uh, SoundCloud, official website, Celsius916.net. Um, got the first uh, video coming out, a cover of Cuts. Uh, got a win, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Basically, you know what I mean? You set yourself up to win, man. It's, it's something out of nothing, man, coming from a situation where you just come out the mud and end up with the goal being victorious, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just doing whatever it takes to win, yeah. you know what I mean? You ain't got to necessarily step on toes. You just got to come out with a plan and execute, man. The theme of the project, you know what I mean? It kind of sounds like that. Is that why you led with that? And, and what do you think the theme of the whole project is? Up in Smoke, man, it was just pretty much, man, like, whatever came up to mind, it's, it's, it's what we put in the air. Mm. So it's, just, it's up in Smoke, you know what I mean? It's, it's whatever you put in your mind, you inhale that, you, you pretty much inhaling your thoughts, you pretty much speaking into existence, and that's what we're we'll coming to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, in my situation in my life right now, man, and you know, it's with all the gentrification and inflation at an all time high, man, you gotta have more than one stream of income to come in, man. So that's that's pretty much pretty much about just coming up, doubling up on the hustle, doubling up on your work ethic, mm -hmm. doubling up on consistency, persistence, mm -hmm. commitment, dedication, just everything is times two now. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Um, you know, from the zones I heard so far, so far that I heard probably my favorite track was the uh Say that then, yeah, that's my that's my type of vibe. Yeah. Uh, what's your shit? Yeah, what's the inspiration behind that first? But then what's your favorite or recommendation? Say that then, man, I got the beef with my cousin, he was just playing. I was just like, this shit sound like it's just some West Coast shit. It reminded me like LA, Bay, just basically the, the epitome of what California sounds supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. And say that then and me and, and being West Coast is that's aggressive to the point, ain't no bullshit, nigga, we Straight, straight at your head. We going for the kill with it. Like, say what you mean. Yeah. If this is what you doing, without being on the bush, say that then. You know what I mean? We ain't got to guess nothing. We ain't got to figure nothing out. We ain't got to read between the lines, put two in the two. I'm saying exactly what the fuck it is, and I'm standing on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, let's say if, if we get to the bag, we get to the bag. That's exactly what it is. We ain't going into detail. Nigga, we doing this. That's what we saying. Flat out, say that then. Like, there's no miscommunication whatsoever. Yeah. That's what we doing, that's what I'm saying, that's exactly what I'm saying, I'm standing by it. Yeah. Period. It's a grind. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's got that uh, that jazzy feel, something that a lot of people don't realize in Sacramento that a jazz sound is very, very big. Mm -hmm. If you're not in that type of genre, you wouldn't know that. You know what I mean? So, infusing that with trap drums and snares and kicks and shit of that nature, man, like, when I felt it, I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, this is it right here. That's what I was gonna say, like how you infuse it, and a lot of them sound kind of big production-wise, yeah. and, and you know what I mean? Talk about the producer and, and you know. Shit, my cousin YP, like. Just even the process of choosing the beats and shit, you know, for the project, was, I could tell it was a process in this itself. Uh, you know I mean? Pretty much, man, I, I had some time, uh, a little vacation time and whatnot, I went down to Stockton to go fuck with my cousin YP, and, he was just like, man, I've been cooking up. I'm like, man, what you got? We go through this all the time. Like, like this is the dude that taught me pretty much bars, writing structure, how to make beats. 
we studied music together the whole nine, and dude was a dope ass producer, man. Dope ass beat maker, engineer, mix, all the shit. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy mindset on, on how to pretty much put a record out. And we were just playing through beats, and he was like, this is definitely you right here. And he played me the grind beat, I said, oh yeah, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard the, the Got a Win joint, I was like, yeah, definitely taking that. Right. Say that thing, he was like, I was like, nigga, I, I, was like, nigga, I need some West Coast shit. So we flipped, he going through a bunch of West Coast beats. I'm like, yeah, let me get that one. I got another one. And it was just like, okay. I got some shit that was more side, like, more of what West Coast is today. Mm -hmm. And then it was just more like, okay, we got that. But now I need to sit back and ride with these. So I'm sitting back a couple days. I'm just, whenever I'm riding around, I'm just playing the beats and just trying to vibe, getting just put down what, what was coming to me. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, well, we gonna do something for radio, we gonna do this, I'm not doing nothing for the radio. Right. If they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing of what the whole concept of Up and Smoke is. It's like, shit, nigga, roll up, smoke one. Yeah. And we gonna nigga put that shit in the air. Yeah. It's what you feel, it's what you feeling. You gonna get what you feeling. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I know what you said, uh, you still at the bottom of shit. Like, that's kinda how you broke off the, the with it. And I was like, why do you still feel like that? Well, why do you feel like that, if, you know? I feel like that because in this game nowadays, like with the whole internet and, and streaming and so forth, and with being so much music is being consumed, mm -hmm. like there's no breaks in this shit. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to stay consistent. Content, music, videos, shows. I mean, you got to pretty much give people kind of a glimpse of a day to day in your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you got to just build content. So even when I took a break to get my personal life together and being married. And you know what I'm saying? Have a son away and just put things in, in perspective. Then get back to the music. Mm -hmm. I can tell there was a quick drop in, in into the attention of what I what I had going right. since Harvest Sessions, since the Bed That, since Bars of Motivation. Because mm -hmm. since I dropped those albums, those, those have been far in between. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I looked at it like, well, I got to give him something that's gonna be like, okay. Harvest Sessions is cool. That's all for the stoners. You know what I mean? Like now, I gotta go ahead and up the end. Mm -hmm. So when I did this, I was like, okay, from here, we gonna start the year at a high bar. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we ain't going down from that, and I'm gonna stay consistent no matter what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So when I did this, it was like, okay, now I know for a fact that I have to have a, a good amount of traffic, real-time analytics, you know what I mean? So I gotta be able to consistently drop content every day, promote every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Invest in myself every day. You know what I mean? Let people know I'm still around in their ear and in their face consistently every day right. at any given time of the hour. You know what I mean? So before work, doing work, after work, every time I have any downtime, I'm on IG, posting, reposting, promoting. You know what I'm saying? In engaging with, with people that could be potential fans. Mm -hmm. Finding ways how to market and promote myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it took a, it took a, a, a good few months to really sit back and study, okay, this is what I need to do to stay consistent. This is what I need to do to keep going up. Start getting that, that awareness back up. So that's pretty much what I was doing, man. Like with this one I wanted to really put a, a, a marketing strategy down mm -hmm. to where I'm like, okay, I got the video, this one we're gonna drop, uh we're gonna do this amount of video, we're gonna promote this like this amount of songs, mm -hmm. we're gonna keep pushing this. Even with the next project dropping in the, within the next three months, right, right. you know what I mean. So I'm dropping four projects this year, period. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for me to drop four projects a year because you know what I'm saying it's four quarters. Yeah. You know what I mean. So this quarter up in smoke. The next quarter I got one with uh, with T.O. Uh, fourth album title we haven't got got there yet. Uh, I'm having the Passion of Celsius, which is going to be. A, 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 well, a commercial wide Peter Coley, the Unseen Asylum produced project, and then um, I'm going to go with Bars Motivation too with the homie Diz from the Clinton Studio. Mm -hmm. So those will be the main four. And I might have some hidden gems here and there, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So, um, also we get back into shows, uh, learning not to just stay in Sacramento, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Branch out to the Bay, go visit LA, do some networking. Hit up Vegas, hit up Reno, hit the spots I know that I can take a drive real quick, plane ride to. Right. And then head out of California, more so Oregon, Seattle, and then work my way east. Yeah. Period. You know what I mean? So I had to have 
a plan written down to where it's calculated. You know what I'm saying? This is chess, not check. You can't just jump without having an actual plan of what you're doing. Right. You didn't have too many features on this motherfucker from what I heard. Um, why is that? Well, I wanted to get people to know more of me personally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool to have features. I don't mind features, but they have to fit the concept of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So this one was more like, I wanted to give people more of me instead of just grabbing features that got more of a fan base or more clout per se, Period. or to have more of a record like, it's cool. But I also wanted to show that, okay, I'm consistent, going hard. I got the quality music to the point to where they're like, instead of me reaching out, they're like, hey, when you do the next project, mm -hmm. let me hop on something. I'm pretty sure if I reached out to a couple cats, they wouldn't mind doing the features. But at the same time, if I have a deadline that I'm trying to set myself and meet myself and they don't meet it, they just don't make it. And it's nothing personal. This is business, you know what I mean? So I'm just like, well, instead of me waiting and having to figure out or feel like I have to bug somebody by getting the verse and sending it out, let me just knock the project out myself and keep it pushing. Right. You know, it's not even just that. And then when it comes to like paperwork, the BMI, the ASCAPs, the sound exchange, and doing all paperwork behind it, a lot of cats don't have it together and it's nothing personal to nobody. Mm -hmm. But I suggest artists learn about these few things. Mm -hmm. Sound exchange, your ASCAP, your BM, ASCAP and BMI, your ISRC codes, which is a uh, industry standard recording code. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that way that tracks your songs. When you get stream numbers, it knows where it's going to or where it's coming from right. and, and it's calculated. Having your copyrights, you know what I mean? And knowing how to process that. And order to process that first before you do your publishing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Find out how do you get your publishing, what publishing is, what type of publishing deal you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Reading terms and conditions on contracts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when you sit down with a lot of artists and learn what split sheets are, a lot of them, they kind of get nervous about it. It's like, no, nah, I'm not trying to yeah. get over on This is what needs to be done. If you're trying to see a real check out this shit, right. you're trying to see a royalty check every three months, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? This is what you need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Point blank, period. So. When I'm looking at this shit, it's like, okay, I need to give some people who are real business money. It's nothing wrong with being an artist, but at the end of the day, this shit is a business. 90% business, 10% talent. Who the fuck how talented you are? If you ain't got the business down, you're just going to be in the wind. Yeah. I see a lot of cats that got, they, 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 they have the fans, they got the, they, they got the numbers, they got all that shit. But it's like, bruh, do you know that you got hella money sitting on the table? Right that you're just not even looking at right. because you're so worried about the cash up front, yeah. it's better to have, it's nothing wrong with upfront money, mm -hmm. but that back end is so much sweeter if you really think about it, yeah. that's your residual money. Because yeah. everybody, sometimes, sometimes they go on YouTube or Spotify or all these other platforms, Apple Music and shit, mm -hmm. and you got thousands of streams or a couple hundred thousand, and you gotta think, each of your songs, if they got a couple hundred thousand on them, that's a good, Five, six thousand dollar check that you did that, that you missing out on. Right. For every song. I tell these niggas that too. Like, you don't get it. This yeah. paperwork ain't nothing but filling out shit, putting yeah. your name on shit. That's all it is. Yeah. Giving yourself information enough to where, okay, you get this check, boom. Now, when you get that money, it's a 70 30. I'm telling you right now, if you had 10 bands on it, that's not your 10. You're going to have seven in your pocket and giving three bands to IRS. Nigga, don't go spending that money and all of a sudden IRS hit your ass with that tax invasion you getting audited, nigga. You need to have your business right, man. And if you really an independent artist, go get you an LLC. Please do. Get your name copywritten, DBAs. It shit don't cost much, man. I guarantee you, just to get your own label started, costs you less than a band. Straight up. And that's facts. That's just doing doing the research. That's, that's listening to cats and really soaking up game of people behind the scenes. You know what I mean? And I'm telling artists this because y'all need to know this. You got these old heads, these, one, these cats that's in the 1% bracket that's making all this money off y'all and y'all don't have no idea how this shit works. And it's easier than what you think. It's really easy. Yeah. And you're going to laugh or kick yourself in the ass about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, when you realize, right. oh, this shit is paperwork. God damn it, I could have been had this money. Yeah. Hell yeah. Exactly. Or be mad at somebody who collected it because you weren't right. smart enough. Right. So you, you, you sitting back, you you thinking that, okay, I got all these views, I ain't getting on, I ain't getting on. Nigga, you got to get your paperwork. Yeah. Hey, put, that that, that to put your cell phone because you're doing all this work. And if 
it don't pan out, you'll be mad because all this shit went in vain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can get paid from doing open mics and shows and shit. You know what I mean? If you got your BMI ass cap, you, you go get you a, a, a performance royalty every three months. You know what I'm saying? You can go, you say you perform at the Blue Land, Ace of Spades, uh, fucking Boardwalk. You know what I mean? All these places that you performing at every couple of months or every twice a month or once every other month or whatever the case may be, if you perform at these spots, let's say if you perform at Blue Lamp one time, Ace of Spades one time, and you perform at the Boardwalk two times, mm -hmm. and you doing that every month because you're getting booked for shows, mm -hmm. and if you log that shit into your ASCAP Live or your BMI Live, expect to see a royalty check after that third month mm -hmm. because they're coming to collect it. Let me ask you that because I never I, I heard about that that part of it, but I never really understood how that worked. All right, how that works is the venue. Let's say Blue Maps is about a two hundred crowd venue. Mm -hmm. You got Ace of Spades, which is about I want to say seven eight hundred crowd venue. You got the Boardwalk, it's about five six hundred crowd venue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They go by the size of the venue cap space mm -hmm. in the venue. Depending on how that goes and your set list, mm. and you turn that into them, you can get anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500, 2,000. Mm. And, it, it, and it goes by how many times you perform. Okay. So out there, of three there's months. no way that they could calculate, because you know how we basically know is sell the tickets, get the money, and that's how you make the money. Yeah. But registering it, what, do they report to mm -hmm. the promoter or Blue all, Lab or? All venues report with BMI asset and they pay that performance fee because they have people that for the rock bands, R and B singers, uh, jazz bands, rappers, you know what I mean? They have people perform at, at these venues. Yeah. So the, the venue owners they have to pay a certain fee to, fee for that. Mm. So when they do come collect, it's already in that account. You know what I mean? That they already. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you that. They so it's just sitting them. there. Yeah, it's, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's sitting there. But they don't tell the promoters, which don't tell the artists that. The promoters don't even know that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. Promoters are trying to, try to basically work the door, right. the tickets. Right. That's it. They but don't work the artists, door because they, they tell artists. Go sell these this. tickets. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. There's a, a step that was always made. And now you just gave me up on that part of it. Yeah. That's right, the third right. step. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can sell your tickets and get your money yeah. up like front. Yeah. Your back end money comes from when you report next to your BMI and your ASCAP and you submitting that, that set list, okay. that playlist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the song that, that, that you're actually turning as a set list, they're registered through BMI or ASCAP. Right. Or sound exchange. So they gotta be one of the songs. It's almost like a play, like a stream almost. They just calculate the stream. Like, okay, I did. 11 songs today. Yeah, 11 songs for this 200 crowd venue. Okay. Or this 500 crowd venue. Mm -hmm. Or this 1,000 crowd venue. Right. And I did this X amount of times this quarter. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the more you perform, the more money. The whole Q Dog shit, man. The nigga, <laughs> the nigga left you out the thing, but it was really with you. And then when that nigga is, how you feel about that? I never really got a chance to sit down with you about it. Oh, man. Uh, I know it's an old thing. It, 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 it's, you know. I mean, it's a dead horse, but at the end of the day, man, it went from a nigga saying that I was whack and, you know, and saying that he threw the battle and all that other shit. And right. Niggas paid him and did do this and do that. Let me tell y'all, man, right here, nigga never got paid for one. I never got paid. That was all the strength of, for the culture. For sack hip hop, sack rap, however you want to put it, we did that for the city. Shots to Gat, you know what I mean? Because he put that together. It was me, Q Dog, uh, my boy Heat Wave, and I forgot another cat. Two other cats, and there was two girls. It was Cherry Red, another girl, and we was at 1806, classic spot too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was a dope night. Uh, we did the uh, we did the battle. And I didn't, I, I'm not knowing this nigga. He don't know me, I don't know this nigga. You know what I mean? So I had to go by what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? Dude short, whatever. 
And I'm knowing he's not from Sacramento, he's from Milwaukee, so I'm like, okay, Midwest cap, whatever the case may be, that, that didn't pay me no mind. I didn't have nothing to go off of, so I was just like, I'm nigga, I'm, I don't have nothing to write, so I don't know you. So I had to go off, like, we're off, like, we're off top. So he go first. I guess he had something written. I don't know. You know what I mean? Didn't matter at that point. And mind you, this is like literally seven years ago. So, and he bows, I go, I freestyle. Now, he's shocked that the fact that I'm freestyling. Like, there's no written, none of this shit. There's no written whatsoever. We go, first round, okay, we set the bar. Second round, he gets halfway through his verse. Nigga, he chokes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. Okay. What are you expecting? Because he was he started coming with it. He started get, getting on my purple shirt, baggy clothes, all the shit. I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking how to rebuttal all this other shit. So now I'm like, it felt like his confidence went from here to gone. So I'm like, now the crowd looking at me like, man, what you gonna do? I'm like, ugh, okay. So we freestyling, we going off, I hit him with a couple lines, some like Gran Turismo shit, whatever, hand language, sign language, just in the third. And then um, he freestyles the, the third, third, like third round. We go like a minute, some odd, whatever, 45 seconds. He freestyle his, I freestyle mine. The judges, you know what I'm saying, based on the fact that he choked, he gave me the win. You know what I mean? And that's how that went. So before that, and even after that, you know what I'm saying, we shook hands, it was cool, all love. So when he did the interview with y'all, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, that's not how it went. This nigga talking big shit. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know if he's trying to uh, clock chase, whatever the case may be. I'm like, he trolling you. Trolling. So I'm like, niggas like, man, you got a problem with somebody? I'm like, nigga, who? <laughs> I had to think about it. I'm like, that's it. Niggas ain't no goddamn problem. So, I go to Facebook after the interview, I'm like, woo-doo-woo. So, Gat called me, he's like, man, this nigga talking shit, woo-doo-woo-woo. I'm like, for what? I'm like, what, is he want to battle again? I mean, yeah. we can do that. It's not even an issue. So, I went up on Facebook, I'm like, hey, Q-Dog. You know what I'm saying? I let the nigga know, like, you like that nigga had your rematch. Nigga, I'm going to bar you the fuck out. Because now it's like, nigga, I'm not freestyling. Nigga, I know a little bit about you. So, now, nigga, I got all... F opportunity to put the pen to the pad and then just bar you the fuck out. And I really will. So, after the post started just going viral, boom, everybody's into like, ooh, woo, doo, woo. So, Zoe's like, hey, he, he tagged a nigga. It's going back and forth, woo, doo, woo, woo. You know, and then, Gat get into it. Like, Gat's watching the shit. Sack get into it. You know, my nigga Sack, he, he, he with all the shits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to my nigga Smoke Gang. So, he gets into shit, niggas talking shit. It go from me and him going back and forth to him and Sack going at it, and Gat see the shit. Niggas is laughing, woo 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 woo. He got some people on his side defending him. Yeah. But I'm like, nigga, you started this shit first. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I call Gat like, man, go get your nephew, nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, nigga, we laughing, right? right? So Gat like, nigga, ah, right, niggas, nigga, I'm talking shit. He said, man, I said, man. I might just go ahead and just go go in the booth, go write something and flame this nigga life away. He said, nah, nigga, don't even worry about it. Nigga, I got him. So that's how that I smell pussy came out and all the shit. So now Q does his diss. The diss is kind of like, okay, it's completely subliminal. You're not dropping names. You saying shit. We know who you talking to, but the crowd don't. Then on top of that, we go to the I go to the YouTube video. It's not getting a lot of views. It's got more thumbs down than thumbs up. You got comments like, "Bruh, this is this is what you call it. this record. This, this shit garbage." I'm like, "Wow." I'm sitting back like I'm eating popcorn and shit. Like just enjoying it. I'm sitting on the bait pen like. Hmm. You didn't even have to respond really. Yeah, I, I really did. Yeah. My niggas was just like, "Man, I got it." Then him and Sack the King, you know what I'm saying? Then him and Sack, they, they was going back and forth. Shit's already getting real, real disrespectful. So Sack was like, nigga, all right, Gat, well, when you already got his, I'm going to do one. So Sack just goes completely disrespectful. Everybody, motherfuckers, is mad. They're like, oh, man, you didn't say that. It's like, nigga, 
ain't no rules in this shit. Nigga, I'm gonna say what the fuck I wanna say. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, nigga, we not friends, nigga. Yeah. Fuck you, nigga, we not friends, nigga. I'm gonna say whatever I wanna say, nigga. Fuck you mean, nigga. Right. You not pumping no fear in me, little nigga. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But before even all that, like, the nigga cute. Alright, alright, so, could tell us the guy, man. PNR 916 stand up. You know what I mean? Is a promoter for battle rap and hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And he know about Q. The nigga inbox me like, hey man, when we set this up, you know what I'm saying, where y'all can battle me, get y'all platform, whatever. Y'all battle with the woo. He's like, nigga, I'm trying to make this happen. You really want to do this? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. It's all good. We can, we can meet up. We can sit and talk about it. I said, bro, money don't even matter. It's the fact this nigga just trying to drag my name and some shit and disrespect my name. Right. Like, I ain't about anything in my rap world. I'm not as good as this nigga's trying to, you know what I'm saying, right. devalue my name. That ain't cool with me. As far as hip hop goes, you know what I mean? Personally, you don't want no smoke. Trust me, you don't. So, and the fact is, I'm like, yeah, I'm with it. Then this nigga starts tagging other promoters. I'm like, what are you tagging them for? They have nothing to do with this shit, nigga. Right. What are you running from? Stop running, my nigga. You feel me? Like, nigga, you dancing, nigga, quit doing that, nigga. Yeah. Yo, shit was supposed to be directed towards me. You said, forget all that. It went towards these other niggas. Yeah. Then you posting up, oh, nigga, I'm getting 3,000 a show. Nigga, niggas throw up a clip of you performing and nobody is in the venue watching you perform. The lady that was sitting there that, that was sitting there having a drink, nigga, she got up and left quietly. So that lets me know, 3K, no way. You're not getting that. You better off getting that at your job, homie. Like real shit. And 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 it's just truth and it, and it's facts. So yeah, you can go elsewhere and get your money, but in sack, you not that nigga, bro. Period. So cut that out. And on top of that, it's like you saying all this shit. Like niggas could have been spotted you, and like and like we not outside because we scared of you. Like niggas got got kids and families and bills to pay. Niggas work jobs too. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. But at the same time, nigga, if we catch you outside, nigga, you smiles on Hallmark cards, nigga. I'm not gonna be like that with you. Yeah. But as far as me and him, it's never went to no fisticuffs or I'm gonna get you or right. nigga, I'm gonna pull up and beat your asses. None of that. Like, nigga, it's either battle me or leave me the fuck alone and keep my name out your mouth. Right. Flat out. You know what I mean? So, at this point, if you nigga still wanna battle, I will still bar your fucking life away, Q. Know that. And the niggas who know me that been around this scene and know what I'm capable of, they know I will bar you the fuck out. So if you're looking at this, when this shit drop, you know what the fuck I mean. I'm not playing. So that's just real shit. Better off vote for Bernie, man. Keep yeah. it real. Yeah. Like <clears throat> that's who I can get my vote to as far as the president when it when it, when it comes to come to these midterms. It, I, I, I rather just, just vote for Bernie and leave it at that, man, because. Honestly, he's the only person that, that's going to try to fight for somewhat fairness. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's better going for Bernie because they, they actually snuffed Bernie the last time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then by popular vote, Hillary's supposed to win. But when you cheat with electoral votes, that lets you know right there. Popular demand don't mean shit. <laughs> it don't. You know what I mean? So she's supposed to be the first woman president. But as politics go, the way they got it set up, they not ready to see no female mm -hmm. run America. Mm -hmm. They rather see another colored man or another pale face in that motherfucker run it before they see a woman run, you know what I'm saying, run and actually win presidency. Period. Right. You know what I mean? Cause they know they'll turn this motherfucker all the way the fuck upside down mm -hmm. and shake some shit up. And that's just the truth of it, man, you know what I mean? So and they dug up the most dirt with Hillary, you know what I mean, as far as uh, learning about, okay, thing with her husband and all this other shit, scandals and this had third emails and so forth, and how she actually constructed the hit on Gaddafi, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and which later ended up forcing Obama to make the hit on Gaddafi. Because mm -hmm. the, the true fact behind Gaddafi was, even though the whole shit is in Syria, Liberia, wherever he was at, in Africa, they saying all, all the shit that he was doing, but the real truth of the matter was, he was trying to make help 
unite the other presidents of the of, of the, the countries in the continent of Africa mm -hmm. to come together and create gold currency. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it crashes the stock market universal wise, and it makes sure that nobody else, whether European, Asian, American, South mm -hmm. American, and so forth, they don't eat off Africa. Your money, your dollar value, don't mean shit over here. Mm -hmm. So if we had a gold currency. You have to fend for yourself in your own country. Right. Use your resources. Stop coming over here and taking ours. Right. That's the name of the game. And a lot of people don't know that Africa is the largest continent in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's the only continent where everything is double the size. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And as far as value and property, like, the where they have us view in Africa and America, it's still jungle and it's, mm -hmm. it's all this and it's bad and... When you really go over to Africa, mm -hmm. it's nothing. It's nothing like that. They got those parts, but it's really nothing like that. Shit's beautiful as fuck. Right. And I can't wait to get my passport and fly out there to go visit and really touch the motherland on my mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's one of my bucket lists. Mm -hmm. Try to take my family, go over there, go see that shit, man. Show my son. Mm -hmm. This is the origin of us as blacks, Africans, indigenous. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is where we come from. Yeah. This is where it all begins. That this is. The alpha, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. This is where we all start from. Yeah. And then coming over here to America, where indigenous people are already here, you know what I'm saying? Europeans, that basically the, the outcast of Europe, Europe, Europeans, they came over here, they raped, stole, pillaged, you know what I mean? All the right, shit. Right. They took over everything that was already from, they took, took, took shit from people that were already here. Mm -hmm. They take shit from us, they learn shit from us, they use it against us. You know what I'm saying, and all the shit. And just do it. You know how that goes. Yeah. Up. That's a that, that that's a whole other subject. Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> yeah. That's you a know? whole interview we can go on that type of shit for sure. Exactly. How you feel about that R. Kelly shit? I know, I know you. You feel me? Man, I put it like this. They finally did something to the nigga. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, they did something to this Catholic priest too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They try to make R. Kelly the face of this shit, and I don't. No way informed condone this nigga's nasty ass sick mind. You know what I mean? For the shit that he doing. Niggas got daughters, you know what I mean? And the shit's just not cool. And, you know, it's always the subject of, okay, y'all just know R. Kelly, but some of these females had older niggas in high school. You know what I mean? Right. You can't say that's different. It's not the fuck justifying it. It's the same shit. Yeah. The thing is, I blame some of the parents. But some of them signed consent form per, per se is what, what is being said. Mm -hmm. Consent forms and basically selling their kids to, to this to this man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For whatever situation y'all in. And it's like, bro, you had a wife and she was condoning this shit too. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, nigga, his crew ain't shit. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no morals, no backbones mm -hmm. to let this nigga know. Nigga, this shit ain't cool, bro. I don't give a fuck what type of music you, and, and, and millions you making, my nigga. This shit ain't cool. The fuck is you doing? I can't get down with this. But them niggas have been with him for years. They've been knowing this shit, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's a bigger problem because the same shit he doing and was doing and being convicted of, somebody was doing to him when he was younger. So, it's a deeper problem. You know what I mean? But... At the end of the day, you know what I mean, media is always going to try to put a black face to certain shit with like pedophilia and so forth. But at the same time, a lot of people don't know. Cause I just caught word of this today and I was looking up some shit and I'm always trying to search information or I catch shit when I'm on IG because I, I, I follow a lot of uh, conscious and knowledgeable shit. And they just passed a law while all this shit was going on. They passed a law in California. It's an SB 145. Check this out. They're making it legal to, if this person's a minor and they're 10 years younger than you, there's no issue with it. Like, dead serious, people. So if you got somebody, so if you got a daughter that's 16 and she fucking with somebody that's 26, you can't take them to jail. You can't press charges on them. They just passed this fucking bill. You know what I mean? So understand what the fuck is going on. So it's I mean, a ten year gap that that's kind yes. of like the law. Yeah. Okay. 
It is S SB 145. Look it up. Man, uh, it's a dope ass project, first and foremost, man. Uh, production is strong, big sale. It's something different for me. Uh, I've already given y'all super aggressive, ultra turn up. I've given y'all uh, the knowledgeable side, the inspirational side. I've given y'all the stoner side. I've given you the, the bet on yourself type of side, the self investment. Um, now it, it's more I'm giving you a, a trap side of me. You know what I mean? A lot of people that like, a lot of people see me as the good person and nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? So I'm giving you something that I'm not a person that lets you know everything about me. But with the music, when we talking about trapping, it's not about dope or no, nothing, nothing like that. I mean, it's, it just means hustle. You know what I mean? We get to it. Uh, I'm not out here telling you um, I got kicks for sale and we, we, nigga, we wrapping up keys and all this other shit because I don't even touch no dope. Period. You know what I mean? I'm a stoner. So if you know what that means with me, you know what I'm getting into. You know what I'm talking about when you listen to it. Flat out. And I'm going to leave it just like that. <laughs>